How's it going everyone? Landon with LMR.com. In this video, I'm gonna be providing my quick overview as well as showing you guys how to install this 5.0 Resto heater tube assembly into your 1986 to 1993 Fox Body Mustang. If the heater tube in your Fox Mustang has developed a crack, a leak, or it's simply seen better days, then these 5.0 Resto heater tube assemblies are more than likely for you. Each of these heater tubes are constructed from steel and feature a factory-like black coating to prevent corrosion and offer a long service life. You'll notice that both tubes feature a properly placed bracket to secure the tube to the lower intake, a female fitting for the coolant temperature sensor, and the large swivel fitting that installs in the front of the lower intake. The only subtle difference between the two is that one has the small fitting for the EGR cooler hose and one does not. If you have deleted the EGR and bypassed the cooler or you have a 93 Cobra intake, the heater tube without the small fitting is the one you're going to need for your application. All other applications that still utilize the EGR cooler, you'll need the one with the small fitting. As far as fitment goes, each of the heater tubes will fit all 1986 to 1993 Fox bodies with a 302 or 351 based engine. Now a little disclosure on the install guys, this being a relatively simple part, you would think the install wouldn't require much effort. Guess again, installing a heater tube can and will be time consuming. I would recommend some good mechanical skills and of course a good selection of tools. We are going to be removing the upper intake and a few of the other components so that we can provide a clear understanding of how everything is removed and reinstalled. Pop the hood and support it via the prop rod. We chose to support our hood with a long piece of wood for additional workroom. If you choose to do this, be mindful of the hood and cow vent grill. And of course, use some towels to protect the paint. Open the radiator fill cap to vent the system. Position a drain pan or bucket underneath the drain plug on the radiator. Now, go ahead and open the drain plug and allow the coolant to drain. You only need to drain approximately three quarters of a gallon of coolant to complete this install. Close the drain plug and wipe up any mess. Loosen and remove the intake pipe. This car has an aftermarket cold air kit, but the steps are very similar for a factory intake. If applicable, remove the small screws, retaining the plenum cover to the intake manifold. Remove the PCV hose from the throttle body and oil fill tube. Loosen the three hose clamps, securing each EGR cooler hose. There are two on the EGR spacer and one on the heater tube if it's equipped. Remove each hose connected to the EGR spacer. Dislodge the throttle position sensor connector push pin. Disconnect the vacuum hose from the EGR valve. Disconnect the EGR electrical connection. Go ahead and disconnect the throttle position sensor electrical connection. Dislodge the throttle cable clip from the ball stud. Loosen and remove the two 3 8 bolts, securing the throttle cable bracket to the intake manifold. Remove the 10-pin connector bracket from the intake manifold. Disconnect the IAC electrical connection. Remove the rubber distributor boot. Loosen and remove the front two upper intake to lower intake manifold retaining bolts. These are going to be half inch. Position the AC hose out of the way. Reach behind the intake manifold and remove the EGR vacuum line. Remove the small vacuum line connected to the fuel pressure regulator as well. Loosen and remove the half inch nuts, securing the crash bar if it's still equipped. Remove the small crash bar. With that out of the way, remove the stud with a half inch socket. Remove the other rearward upper intake retaining bolt. Loosen and remove the upper intake manifold retaining bolts. Before going any further, Use an air line to flush any debris from the intake area. Disconnect the four plug wires from the distributor cap that pertain to bank one, which is the passenger side. If it helps, mark each plug wire. Unclip the rotor cap and position it out of the way. Cover the open distributor with a few towels. Lift up on the upper intake and cover the ports. If you can't get to the last vacuum hose that connects to the tree on the firewall, simply remove the two screws securing the vacuum tree. Then. Disconnect the brake booster vacuum hose, followed by the cruise control vacuum if equipped. The last hose is part of the EVAP system. It's located at the front of the upper intake. The easiest way to remove it is from the canister purge valve. It's located on the passenger side inner frame rail near the charcoal canister. The upper intake and gasket are now finally free to come out. Have a rag ready and depress the Schrader valve to vent any fuel pressure that may be present. 
Dislodge the engine harness from the heater tube. Now, disconnect any electrical connection associated with this side of the harness. Once that is done, position the harness out of the way. Go ahead and position the throttle cable bracket out of the way. Blow away any debris from the base of each injector with compressed air. It may also be in your best interest to spray the base of the injectors with quality brake clean to remove any residual dirt buildup. Loosen the hose clamps that secure the two heater hoses to the heater tube. Have some rags ready before you remove the hoses. Go ahead and remove each hose from the heater tube. Utilize a one inch deep socket and extension to remove the coolant temperature sensor from the heater tube. Loosen the hose clamp at the front of the heater tube. Go ahead and remove this hose. Loosen the hose clamp securing the upper radiator hose to the thermostat housing. Have a few rags ready before you remove the hose. Go ahead and remove the hose and then position it out of your way. Disconnect the alternator electrical connection. This will allow additional workroom if you're going to be using an open end wrench to remove the large fitting in the lower intake manifold. Use a one and one eighth inch open end wrench to loosen the swivel fitting on the heater tube. Do not fully remove the fitting at this time. Brace the heater tube retaining bolt. Loosen and remove the heater tube retaining bolt. Loosen and remove the fuel rail to lower intake retaining bolts. Spray WD-40 at the base of the injectors. Carefully pry up on the injectors to dislodge them from the lower intake. Unclip both of the fuel line safety clips. Spray some WD-40 into the fuel line quick connect fittings. Utilize the correct size disconnect tool to release these fittings. Carefully pry each injector out of the lower intake while they are still installed into the fuel rail. Once removed, verify that there is an O-ring and an end cap on the base of the injectors. Use the 1 and 1 8 inch open end wrench or crow's foot to fully remove the swivel fitting. The heater tube is now free to come out. If you notice, the lower intake manifold stud was removed along with the heater tube. Use a thin wrench to hold the stud while you remove the half inch retaining nut. Reinstall this studded bolt back into the lower intake. The torque spec for this one is 18 pound feet. Take this time to clean the area. Thoroughly clean and inspect the threads in the lower intake. Before installing the heater tube, lubricate the O-ring in the swivel fitting. Ensure that the two hose clamps on the rear heater hoses are on the hoses. Position the new heater tube into place. Install the rear heater hoses onto the tube. Pass the bracket over the stud on the lower intake. Ensure that the swivel fitting is even with the opening in the lower intake. Start this fitting by hand, then carefully tighten it. If at any time the fitting doesn't want to turn, stop. Back it out and see what's going on. Apply anti-seize to the heater tube retaining nut. Thread it back onto the stud and then torque to 72 inch pounds. Position the rear hose clamps and then snug them down. Install the front hose onto the heater tube. Go ahead and position that clamp and then snug it down. Lubricate the O-rings at the base of the injectors. Line up the injectors with the lower intake. Then you can go ahead and fully seat each injector. Reinstall the two bolts that retain the fuel rail to the lower intake. Torque these to 89 inch pounds. Clean the threads on the coolant temperature sensor. Go ahead and apply thread sealer to the threads. Thread the sensor into the heater tube by hand. Carefully tighten the sensor. Lubricate the O-rings on the fuel lines. Install the quick connect fittings back onto the fuel rail. Reinstall the safety clips. Reposition the injector harness. Reconnect the four fuel injectors, EVAP connection, and coolant temperature sensor connection. Reconnect the alternator electrical connection if removed for clearance. If replacing the PCV filter and grommet, Go ahead and do that now. Remove the grommet and then use a small pick to remove the mesh filter. Clean the opening in the lower intake. Install the new mesh filter followed by the grommet. Remove the rags covering the lower intake ports. Wipe the mating surface and ensure that it's clean. Preferably, position a new gasket into place. This gasket will only install one way. Place the rags back over the lower intake ports. This will help keep any foreign material out of the ports when you reposition the intake. Reposition the upper intake and then remove the rags. Realign the intake gasket. Reinsert the PCV fitting into the grommet. Reinstall the long middle intake bolts. Then you can reinstall the front and the rear intake bolts. Ensure that the studded bolt goes back into the correct hole. Run all these bolts down evenly. 
Then, working inside out, torque each bolt to 18 pound-feet. Reposition the small crash bar if you'd like. Typically, someone had probably already removed this at some point in the car's life. Reinstall the half-inch nuts and retighten. At this point, you can begin reinstalling and reconnecting vacuum lines and electrical connections. Reposition the throttle cable bracket and reinstall the retaining bolts. Torque these to 18 pound-feet. Apply grease to the ball stud on the throttle body and reinstall the throttle cable clip. Reconnect the IAC electrical connection. Install the correct hose onto the nipple on the heater tube. Pass the two small hose clamps over the hose and then slide the hose over the EGR spacer port. Position each clamp and tighten them down. Reinstall the rearward EGR spacer hose and retighten the clamp. If you are installing the heater tube without the nipple, these steps are not needed. Align the vacuum tree with the holes in the firewall. Reinstall and retighten the retaining screws. Reinstall any other vacuum hose that was removed for clearance. Reconnect the long vacuum hose to the canister purge valve. Remove the rags from the distributor. Reposition the distributor cap. Be sure and engage the clips. Reinstall the plug wires in the correct order. Go ahead and reinstall the distributor boot. Reinstall the upper radiator hose back onto the thermostat housing. Snug down the clamp. Reinstall the PCV hose that runs from the fill tube to the throttle body. Then at this time, you can go ahead and reinstall the intake pipe and then reinstall the plenum cover. Fill the radiator with coolant. Remove the hose connected to the front of the heater tube. This will allow the system to bleed out any air. Reconnect this hose and add any additional coolant. Double check your work. Start the car and verify that everything is dialed in. After that, you're all finished. Wrapping things up here, guys, I would strongly recommend setting aside a few hours to get this one done. Be mindful of other components and replace them while you're there, such as the lower to upper intake manifold gasket and the rear PCV components, and of course, anything else that may need to be replaced. Make sure that the swivel fitting at the front of the heater tube threads smoothly into the lower intake. Double and triple check the threads before you start threading it into the intake. Again, guys, you're gonna have premium materials here. It goes right into place, and it is a must-have for your 5.0 or 5.8 liter Fox body. To see more how-to and review videos covering industry-leading products, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and don't forget to turn on notifications. While you're at it, check out our other videos, and don't forget to shop LMR.com for all things 1979 to present Mustang and SVT Lighting.